Hello everybody. Welcome to a review and disassembly session of a Revolt 160 Pro motor. Um, this is the one with a 50 kV. Uh, also hall sensors and temperature sensor included. I decided for a custom shaft with just 19 millimeters uh, because I've got lots of hardware available for 19 millimeters um, coming from, from comparable motors like Agni, Lynch and uh, Perm. Um, on the other hand it's a little longer. Uh, yeah, I just thought I can shorten it at any time but making it longer is a little bit more difficult. So we're starting with a weight measurement. Um, I don't know what the manufacturer says, but over here it has a weight of less than 8 kilograms, which is really impressive for a machine which is uh, rated um, 12 kilowatts and peak power 20 kilowatts. If only this is partly true, that is amazing. So on the other hand, over here, we've got a disassembled one. That's what it looks like. Um, over here, for the rotor, you can see the 14 permanent magnets, always alternating, north and south pole, of course. Uh, manufacturer says uh, 80 degrees Celsius continuously and 100 degrees Celsius for short times whatever that means. The stator over here looks like that. We've got the hall sensors, we've got the temperature sensor and of course the three uh, mains for, for the phases. It says AWG6 uh, silicone insulation, that's nice, but AVG6 is, uh, yeah, doesn't tell me much, um, <laughs> so I need to look it up. It was uh, equal to 13 square millimeters, which is suitable for currents up to 100 amps, but definitely no more. Um, the stator itself uh, has 12 poles, <coughs> typical design for such a machine. Um, always, oh, let's start over here, the um, interconnection is internally done as delta. Uh, that means the measured resistance between two phases over here, which was 8 milliohms, is finally um, 1.5 times, uh, because in a delta you've got one phase and parallel to two phases in series. So all the copper on four of those poles, probably over here, those two ones are connected with each other in series as well as over here where it goes on. And all that copper in total has then around about 12 milliohms. Um, what else do we have? The hall sensors are of course placed, where is one? Over here, exactly between the two poles. Uh, I also measured the uh, pulses, the hall signals with a, hello, focus, yes, uh, with a four channel oscilloscope and as expected for such a design there's yeah no chance to have any uh, a any mistakes in the um, timing of the phases. So it was exactly 120 degrees phase shifted as far as I was able to measure it at all. The temperature sensor, where is it? Temperature sensor is somewhere hidden deep inside of one of the winding packages disappearing so that also sounds, looks good. Uh, the bearings are of type NSK and uh, somewhere there were rumors that um, 
they have a little bit too much friction at higher speed so I, I modified the lubrication a little bit so now it has a little less friction probably. We've got those nice parts over here, nice CNC parts. As well as that part over here. Some holes and somewhere we've got a set screw in there for balancing the rotor. Uh, the, <clears throat> the SATA is designed for, um, manufacturer told me, 120 degrees continuously and um, 150 degrees uh, Celsius short time. Yeah, if we look at that construction with less state and then 8 kilograms of, of material, mainly copper and iron, uh, it's obvious that we've got a temperature problem. So even though the, the efficiency might be very high, like 90%, uh, at round about 10 kilowatts, that means we've got 1000 watts of, of heat in, in such a fairly small construction. And um, the thermal capacity of copper and iron are almost the same. It's like 400 joule um, per kilogram and Kelvin. So to heat up in total 8 kilograms of such material by 80 Kelvin uh, with 1000 watts losses it takes just a few moments, few minutes and then we reach um, or we exceed the maximum temperature and if we look at the possibilities where we can cool that construction at all it's, it's just limited you know uh, so without any massive airflow through the machine, so at least for the stator, I can see a chance to have some airflow through the winding packages and also the varnished copper wires provide some surface for cooling. Um, so, but anyways, uh, we will have a temperature problem. Um, on, on the one hand, of course, it's good to have such a high uh, power density, 12 kilowatts and just 8 kilograms, uh, but on the other hand um, it, it's a very short uh, thermal time constant. Um, yeah, so sooner or later we need to think about um, massive forced ventilation through that construction, because also um, conducting the heat through the bracket where it is mounted um, it, it's too far away from where the heat is produced over here. Yeah, so far uh, that was a first insight into a Revolt 160 Pro. Some details of the Type 50 kV with hall sensors and the temperature sensor. And uh, yeah, now I think I will assemble it again and make the test bench uh, running again and uh, yeah, trying to apply some some forced ventilation to have more than uh, the 7 kilowatts mechanical power I reached in my performance test, which you can see in, in another video. Alright, so far, see you soon again, goodbye.